Here is an AC circuits practice problem, kind of an AC circuits practice problem. Kind of changing magnetic field practice problem, but let's just do it anyway. So this, I found this online, um, but I've always heard this was a real story, and I don't know that if it's a, just a legend or not. But the idea is this farmer, see it says right there, a farmer, stole electrical power uh, by putting a large coil under a high voltage transmission line. And so that was free. You can get free electricity. In theory, you can. Um, and I'll show you why. Eventually, they were convicted, blah, blah, blah. Assuming the lowest transmission line was 10 meters above the ground and carried a current alternating 60 hertz with a maximum of 150 amps at 230 kilovolts. Uh, if the coil was in the shape of a square, five meters on a side, that's kind of big, but whatever, uh, touching the ground and touching the ground, approximately how many turns of loops of wire needed to get 120 volts. Let's draw a picture. So here's my high voltage power line. Uh, and I'm gonna put I'm gonna put this as I as a function of time. Right? Because this is gonna be, and let's write this as um, it says it carries a maximum current of 150 amps. So I could write this as 150 times sine of two pi F T. Right? So this would be an oscillating current with a frequency of 60 hertz. So 6F equals 60. So that's, the, that's how we can model that. And that would give us a current that looks like this. And it doesn't say that it's a sine. It doesn't say it's cosine. But I think that's okay to assume. Now the next thing that we have, uh, we do have the 230 kilovolts. I don't think that matters. Um, yeah, I don't think that matters. So, but down here, we're going to have a coil of wire. And this is five meters by five meters. And the the bottom of this, let's say the center of this will be if the if the ground is ten, let's say this is uh, the center of this is eight point five. Is that right? No, seven point five. So two point five, seven point five, seven point five meters from the wire. Now, why would you get a voltage at all out of here? Uh, I'll say EMF equals n delta phi delta t. That's how it, that's Faraday's law. That says if there's a changing magnetic flux, then I'm going to get a voltage. And I want this to be 120 volts. Um, so why would that be the case? Well, if I have a, of a, the current as in, at an instance going this way, uh, and it will make a magnetic field down here going into the page, and then after, uh, after 30 after half a second, it'd be going the other way, right? Because here this is into the page and then out of the page. And the, freak, the time over here is one second. Wait. No, it's one sixtieth of a second. All right, so 60 times every second. So this time from here to there is one thirtieth of a second. So it's, but that doesn't really matter. So I'm going to go, we're going to do an approximation here because really this is a difficult situation since the voltage, the current changes. So we're just going to get some rough approximation. That's fine. So let's make some really great assumptions. Assume the following. And they're not true. B equals a constant. So as I get further away from here, uh, the magnetic field decreases. And in fact, we can calculate that B equals mu naught I over 2 pi r, right? So this is going to be r. And so the, the magnetic field at the top and the bottom of the coil are different. But I'm just going to use the middle. And that's fine. Uh, constant in space, not constant in time. And then I'm going to assume that b goes from uh, b max to b min, so the opposite direction, in 1 60th of a second. And that's not the best, right? Because I'm going to assume a constant magnetic field, constant in the opposite direction, and it's going to use that change as uh, six, 1 60th of a second. That's all. And then I think that's it. I can do everything else. So let's go ahead and get an expression for the flux. Uh, the delta flux is going to be B2A minus B1A, and b 2 and B1 are in the opposite direction. So it's really the magnitude of this is going to be 2BA. 
and the area is going to be five by five. Uh, the magnetic field is this. Uh, so, and I'm going to put in, I'm just going to put in the maximum current because I don't really care. Uh, it's not right, but you can make this much better, uh, but it's not wrong. So that's uh, my current 150. Uh, R is 7.5. Uh, mu naught, remember, mu naught equals, is it 4 pi times 10 to the negative seventh? I always get that backwards. Let me double check. I feel dumb. I'm looking it up. Where's my sheet? Oh, okay. I'm pretty sure that's it. <laughs> Let's just look it up. They're not there. Let's look it up right here. Oh, right here. Uh, mu naught. Images. That's the best way to go. Mu naught. Okay, that's right. Yeah. Okay. And I'm going to use Python for this because it's kind of complicated. Uh, that's not what I want. I'm having trouble here. Okay. Switch to overhead. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to solve for n. So n is going to be, uh, let's call that v out, which is 120, uh, divided by delta flux times delta t. And so delta t is that. That's my change in flux. I'm all set. I do need to calculate the magnetic field right there. Okay, so let's do all of this. I'm going to do it all in Python so that we can change the numbers and see what happens. Uh, it's going to be great. This would be a fun problem to do uh, numerically with Python, but I'm not going to do that. So I'm switching over here to Python. Uh, this is my calculator. You don't have to use this. So I'm going to just write down my constants here. Uh, I equals, what was it, 150. Uh, F equals 60. So DT is 1 over F. Um, what else? R is equal to 7.5. Uh, A is equal to 5 squared, right? 5 times 5 is 5 by 5 squared. Uh, mu naught is equal to 4 times pi times 1 times 10 to the negative 7. That's just the way to do that. Uh, what else do I have? Uh, I need to calculate B to uh, V out. V out is 120. You know, this is what we call a back of the envelope calculation because even though I'm making some approximations, it's going to tell me a lot. It's going to tell me, is this way off? Uh, is it even possible? Does he need a million turns and it's not going to happen at all? Then we don't even need to prosecute, right? If we're in the court of law, we just say, well, don't worry. Don't worry about it. Okay, let's calculate B. B equals mu naught times I divided by 2 times pi times R. And then I'm going to, and now I can calculate N. N equals uh, V out times the change in flux, which is going to be 2 times B times A. We said that. Divided by the chain, oh no, I'm sorry, V out times dt divided by uh, the change in flux, which is 2 times b times a. And see, what's nice here about using Python is that I can calculate b on the side and then just use that value. I don't ever have to actually write it down. If I did this in the calculator, it would be, it'd be a, a pretty long equation to type in uh, numbers to type into that calculator, and it would, I'd probably make a mistake. So let's print n equals n. And I may have made a mistake. That happens. Okay, okay, so that's good right here. So I get 10,000 turns. So 10,000 turns of copper. I mean, that's a lot, but it's not crazy. Um, and I made some approximation to have to get less energy because I assumed a max and a max. Um, but you could, I mean, if you had to do 20,000, if you can do 10,000 turns, you could do 20,000 turns, right? That would double the voltage. So that's not that big of a problem. It's definitely plausible that he could do this. Now, that is a lot of copper. Um, but it is indeed plausible.